Welcome to the Can't Stop the Growth podcast, the home service podcast dedicated to personal and leadership development. I'm your host, Chad Peterman, and if you're ready to grow as a leader, you've come to the right place. Let's jump in. Our guest speaker is Chad Peterman. He is a 2014 University of Indianapolis alumni who was also a part of the MBA program. And he is now the president of Peterman Brothers. If you all can give it up for him. Hi, Chad. Thank you for being here with us today. Yeah, absolutely. Excited to be here and uh, share some of the stuff that uh, I learned while I was here and uh, some stuff that uh, I'm, I'm learning now. That sounds great. So maybe we can start with a few um, things that you can tell us about your collegiate and professional journey up to this point. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I uh, graduated from uh, Ron Colley High School uh, here on the south side of Indianapolis, uh, went to Wabash College. Uh, out in Crawfordsville, uh, graduated in 2009, went to, uh, to work um, actually outside of the family business after college and uh, moved back home in 2011. Uh, my, my brother at the time actually went to the University of Indianapolis and started in the family business in 2011. Um, at the time, uh, we were about 20 or so people, uh, and I didn't know anything about HVAC, uh, literally nothing. Um, and so learned a lot uh, just kind of watching my dad picking up things and learning things and screwing up things and fixing things and all of those things, uh, which has, uh, I, I guess, led us here today. Um, today, uh, we have uh, our, our main locations down in Greenwood, Indiana, um, just right off the Main Street exit down there. Um, we also have five other locations across central Indiana, uh, about 640 employees now um, doing HVAC, uh, plumbing, and electrical uh, service. All right, so you've spent a lot of time developing your company's culture, and with that you've done books, you've done podcasts. Um, how did developing your own career and education lead you to mainly focus on the culture of your company? Yeah, I think um, the biggest thing there and in, in when building a company is to understand uh, what your lane is. Um, so many people uh, want to be the, the jack of all trades. And, and what I found out very early on was that I wasn't the best at everything. And that's okay. Um, the key is, is, is understanding that you're not, and then go finding really great people who are. Um, you know, today in our company, I could count, uh, it'd take me both hands to count the number of meetings where I was the dumbest person in the room. And that's a good thing. Like, hey, teach me how to work this, because you're the expert. Hey, how do we do this, because you know, or hey, whatever they say, I'm on board with, because I trust them. And so, I think the one thing that, uh, you know, through uh, earning my MBA and, and even in undergrad, it was, it's okay not to be great at everything. You just need to find the thing that you're really passionate about um, because what you're passionate about um, are, is what you're going to care about and what you're going to make moves and uh, move forward to develop and, and become better at. So speaking on not having everything and knowing everything, I saw that you guys have um, a training program for trades. Um, how would you suggest that young people today that are trying to decide between trades and uh, higher education decide their own path, especially since you opted to invest into your own education? So like, what was the reason that you actually chose your MBA? Yeah, as she mentioned, we do have uh, we have our own trade school in uh, in house. Uh, with all the trades, we have about a five thousand square foot lab there. Um, we'll train. Uh, the goal is to train over two hundred technicians this year um, in the trades. Uh, what I would tell you about my journey and and why I chose to um, you know invest in my MBA was 
more so along the lines of I was getting into business and I didn't know a darn thing about business. Um, and so I figured, well, the best place to start is probably over here. And I've always been one that is interested in learning and understanding things and figuring out things. And so for me, um, doing my MBA while I was working um, during the day uh, was extremely beneficial in the fact that what I learned that evening, I was able to apply that next day. And a lot of that is I have my dad to think, thank for that because he allowed me to take these crazy ideas that I had dreamed up and try them out. And, you know, it may not work or it may work and, and we'll all figure it out together. So when it comes to your education, I think the biggest thing is I wouldn't tell you that there's like a, oh, if you're going to own a business, you need an MBA. Uh, I wouldn't tell you that you don't need it. What I would tell you is to learn as much as possible. So there is, I've learned so much from just investigating things on my own. And I will tell you the other piece of the puzzle is what I spoke about earlier, is you're never going to know it all. Um, and more than likely, there are people that specialize in certain things. So exactly what you're doing this evening by networking, by listening, all of those things are going to be things that will benefit you down the road. Um, everybody talks about networking and the, and the power of it. Um, I would say in the last five years, I have, and I'm not like a huge networker. I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna come up and be the life of the party. You can ask my wife. Uh, not the life of the party, but networking is simply just reaching out and asking somebody, hey, you seem like you know what you're doing. How do you do that? Will you show me? And then keeping those people close by because um, having that network around, it's not just who you know, it's what people do you know that you're going to need to know to continue to grow your business? So with learning things to grow your business, what um, did you learn from the MBA program that really put you in the success that you are in now with the Peter Peterman company? Yeah, so, you know, I, I look at any sort of... Uh, of education as it wasn't the like, ooh, I learned this Monday night in 2013. It was more for me going to work and going to school at the same time um, and trying to figure out that load. Like, okay, I gotta go to work, I gotta work late, I gotta go to class, well it's nine o'clock at night now and I gotta wake up early and go back to work. And so for me it was more of just conditioning my mind and my understanding of what it was going to take to get where I wanted to go. I had big goals, big aspirations, still do, but what I will tell you is that the way to all your goals, regardless of what they are, what MBA class you take or don't take, the key ingredient in all of this to get where you want is one, pick out where you want to go and write it down. So. Find where it is that you want to go and write that down and then work backwards to understand what it's going to take me day in and day out to get there. I'm sure a lot of you guys have people in your lives that have set goals and they're like, who is that guy? Like, what is he talking about? And there's a lot of people that will talk. What I will tell you is if you can put the work behind your talk, stuff will start to happen for you. It's inevitable. If you put in the work it will happen. You will find the right people. You will stumble upon the right opportunities. That is the key to your success, regardless of what it is that you want to do. So find that thing that you're truly passionate about, and then understand what is the level of work it is going to take me to get where I want to get. And the other thing I will tell you about goals, whatever your goal is, I always tell people this, whatever your goal is, Double it. Double the size of whatever goal it is that you set for yourself. Because goals are not meant to be achieved. They are simply meant to direct our actions. So what do your actions look like if your goal is double what you first thought it was? That's what you've got to understand. That's what you've got to figure out in where it is that you want to go.
Is there anything that you would have done differently um, when you were plotting your education and your graduate degree plans that you can think of? I don't think so. Uh, yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with how things went in my education. Um, you know, I loved, I was actually at an event, uh, a Wabash event uh, this morning, actually, um, at UND tonight. So I'm like hitting, hitting both, both sides of the coin there. Um, but no, really happy with, with how things turned out. Um, you know, uh, personally, uh, coming back here and uh, doing my MBA at UND allowed my, to me to watch my brother play football. Uh, so that was really cool. Uh, we actually lived together right around campus and uh, um, had, uh, had a great time. And it was good being away for two years to come back and be able to hang out with him and watch him uh, play. And uh, yeah, so I, I wouldn't change a thing. I mean, yeah, there's things that went a certain way. And yeah, but I, I don't have any regrets. regrets. Okay, so since you have no regrets, what was your most memorable moment here when you were doing your MBA, and how did that impact you uh, personally and professionally? Oh, Courtney, it's been a, been a couple years uh, since I was walking around campus here. You know, I, I think that the most memorable thing for me was, one, getting to talk with people that weren't in my industry. Um, so I, I feel like when I was in, in class, I met people from Cummins and uh, Citizens Energy and people that just, they were solving different business problems. But at the end of the day, I mean, business is business and may, they may be solving a different problem, but at the end of the day, all of those places take people. And you need people to grow and develop and learn and solve problems. And so being able to uh, you know, work in groups and do different projects um, and, and different things like that was, uh, to me, the most beneficial part of the experience, um, simply just to get all of those different perspectives. And I think that even in life, I think that getting different perspectives uh, is such a valuable thing um, because someone who grew up halfway around the world or across the country or whatever it is, um, it may be different. And it may not be what you agree with, um, but what I can tell you is it's, it's valuable. Their perspective is valuable in crafting what it is that you want your perspective to be. So you and your brother have grown your business to more than 600 employees, and you guys have trucks all over the city. Do you want to expand anywhere else other than Indiana? Yeah. Don't tell anybody, but we're moving. Uh, no, yeah, we've got uh, some big plans this year. Uh, I'm actually f uh, flying to Memphis tomorrow morning uh, at 7.30 uh, to uh, um, look at a company down there. Um, so, yeah, we have, uh, we have some big plans. Um, but know that our big plans are not growth for growth's sake. Our big plans are simply because we have people on our team that are intent on getting better each and every day. And it's mine and my brother's job to keep growing this company so that they continue to have opportunities. Because if we stop growing the company and they are growing themselves, then we're gonna have a real problem because they're gonna go find someplace else to work where there is opportunity. And so that's how we build our vision for where we want to go. We build it because the people on our team are so passionate about getting better that we have no other choice. There is no other choice if you're passionate about developing the people on your team. You have to grow the company. There is no other way around it because you're gonna lose all your people and your company will collapse. So understand that if you ever get in business for yourself um, or working at a company, if your company is not growing, you are dying slowly and it will not end well. So find those places to work that are intent on developing their people and have a growth plan to move forward. All right, Chad, I believe that you gave us a lot of gems, a lot of information to take away from. 
Um, now I'm going to open the floor for the audience. If you guys have any questions, yeah, so we'll take audience questions right now. So Peter Man Brothers is pretty much, at least in my point of view, ubiquitous in Indianapolis. You see the trucks everywhere. I was at the airport yesterday. The advertising is there. So just great job with the marketing. And I just wanted you to say, how has that been in terms of marketing? How has it been for your business? Have you, has it been really instrumental in the growth that you're doing? And, and, and what is that from a marketing perspective? Yeah, from a marketing perspective, um, I mean, we've got uh, an unbelievable team. We have three people on our marketing team here tonight um, that uh, are, are continuing to do that. I would tell you that the one thing that uh, I talk about is from a marketing perspective is really investing early, um, especially from our business. Like we have to be out in front of customers and customers don't always need us. Actually, usually when they call, they don't want to be calling. Uh, they've got a problem that we've got to fix. And so it's kind of a unique challenge in that we have to market knowing that customers really don't want to call us. Uh, so that's been, um, that's been kind of the challenge. Um, the way that our team has really overcome that is really crafting a story around the, around the brand um, and making it feel uh, like, hey, if I do need to call somebody, that's who I would like to call because, well, they seem like good people and, you know, the story that, that has been crafted around the brand and the family and, and all of that stuff. So, um, yeah, from a marketing perspective, our team does a phenomenal job. Um, they're constantly finding uh, opportunities and, and different ways to, to navigate the market. And, you know, I think we went to, oh, I think it was over, it may have been close to 100 like fairs and trade shows and this, that, and the other um, this past year. Um, so just really getting the name out there and, and that consistency, I think, is, is the key point for sure. Good evening, Chad. Uh, my name is Anik, and uh, just like you, I'm a alum of the MBA program here at UND. And um, I just uh, wanted to uh, get your perspective on how effective, in your opinion, was the MBA program in promoting uh, free markets and uh, capitalism? I think it did a very good job in that respect. Um, the one thing that I wish the MBA program offered a little bit more uh, insight into is kind of entrepreneurship. Um, and I think that that is a track and I'd love to, I know we have the right people in the room, I'd love to help out uh, however we can. Um, but I think that that is something in, um, in all of the things that I learned, uh, those were some of the tougher ones to apply uh, when going back to a small family-owned business. Um, and so I think that having um, potentially a track like that I think could be really uh, instrumental in attracting students and um, you know all of the projects. I know we have a group of UND students that are doing an uh, internship with us right now, doing some data analysis. I think they were in this morning, I think, um, doing some, uh, yeah, some uh, data work and, and different things like that, which is so cool, and I'm excited to have them in there and see what we can teach them. But yeah, I think overall it was great. Me personally, selfishly, yeah, I wish they had more stuff that was entrepreneur uh, focused and different things like that. But at the end of the day, learning is learning, and I, I think I got a lot out of it for sure. Do you have any tips on uh, staying organized, whether that's um, you know using maybe a to-do list or like any online? <coughs> you know, softwares that you use to stay organized? I feel like I've become more unorganized uh, by the day. Um, but, uh, you know, for me, it was always a, uh, a to-do list um, and then ranking your to-do list by what's going to be most impactful. Um, I would also recommend, uh, you know, I, I used to put, like, brushing my teeth on my to-do list and uh, or taking out the trash or eating breakfast because then you get some early wins in the day, get a little momentum rolling. Um, and so, uh, yeah, there's a bunch of different tricks. I think it's just finding the system that works for you um, that, uh, that, that you can, um, you know, stay organized with. Uh, so, you know, some people have calendars and different stuff like that. Like I got a big calendar that I just write on above my about my computer, that kind of keeps me organized because it's right in front of me. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I have any like fail-safe ways to stay organized, but 
Um, I think finding, finding the one that works best for you is, is key rather than doing what everybody else is doing. I spent about seven and a half years at like a multi-billion dollar you know, national company. In the past three months, I've joined a more local company of like 50 employees, uh, the IT team of myself and one other person. So I just want you to kind of like reflect maybe more on the early days of a company of 20. How, do you, how did you encourage or the challenges you face of such a small company of people wearing other hats that maybe aren't their specialty just to grow that business to what you've grown today? You know, early on, yeah, you do everything. Uh, there isn't anything that you don't do. Um, I would say that, uh, so any business in early stage is going to be tough, right? There's the thing that you want to do, and then there's the 14 other things that you have to do in order to keep it rolling. What I would tell you, and, and the biggest lesson as you scale, is being early to let go of things. So when you're scaling the business, there's always this understanding that I do it best. Well, no one can do it like me. Well, I'm the best at this. And in fact, you may be. But what I will tell you is that there's probably someone out there in the world that's better at it than you. If I had to, you asked me about regrets earlier. I got one right here. So my regret would be is I held on to the operation side for like probably about 18 months too long. And if I would have let go and just got out of the way and let someone who was better at it than I, namely my brother and uh, our director of operations, if I would have just got out of the way and let them do their thing, we would have probably grown even faster. Truly, I was the roadblock. I was the person in the way of our growth because I wanted my hands on everything and you just can't do that. And also, operationally, I wasn't good. Like, that isn't my thing. Like, I want to be thinking about 14 different things. That's kind of my specialty. So that's the piece as you grow. What hamstrings companies is when an owner or the person in charge doesn't want to let go. You got to let go, and you got to go find great people who are really good at whatever it is that that is, um, and, let, and get out of their way. Just get out of the way. Don't tell them what to do. Don't, I mean, there's many a meetings where people come and ask, well, can't, what, do you think we should do this? And I go, well, do you think we should? And they say, yeah. And I say, yeah, sounds good. That seems like your job. So like, I trust you. That's why you're on our team. So go make it happen. We don't need to have a, you know, di three hour discussion or anything like that. Like, let's move. That's the other piece of the puzzle that I would tell you is that in business, Speed kills. The more speed you can generate and agility, so it's not just, hey, go run through that wall. It's, hey, go be prepared to run through that wall, but then be agile enough to maybe take a step right, take a step left, get to where you're going. But the people who sit around in meetings all day and want to discuss things till you're blue in the face, guess what? They never get anything done because they're still sitting in the room while you've already tried three things because you want to move fast. That is the one thing that I will tell you in business. If you can find a way to move fast and find people who want to move fast with you, um, you can grow something really, really special. Hi, Chad. My name is Ramat. Thank you very much for being with us this yeah, absolutely. Week. So I'm a technical person, and the reason why I'm getting my MBA is because sometimes I move up, yeah. like have a growth in my uh, company. So I want to ask you, uh, what would you say has been your biggest challenge managing people? I don't know if your path was a bit late. I don't know what your background is, like what's your undergraduate degree in? A political science. Yeah. No experience managing people there. <laughs> okay. So what has been your, like, your greatest challenge in managing people? So I am a terrible manager. I don't like managing people. Um, I'm not good at holding others accountable. What I am good at is crafting a vision that people believe in. And when people believe in it, they want to make you proud. And so to me, the advice that I would give as a leader, as some of you look to be leaders, 
is that a leader's main job is to be inspiring. Now, that sounds like a kind of a pie in the sky thing, right? Like inspiring, what, is, what does that mean? Your job as a leader is to build a vision, believe in the people that you are leading, and remove roadblocks. It's not tell them what to do. It's not do for them what they're supposed to do. It's literally be there to find out how you can make them as successful as possible. And what I will tell you is that if you want to lead people and you want to be successful, care. Care. It, the simplest thing that we'll talk about tonight, but if you want people to believe in you and you want them to be inspired by you, you have to care. No one follows anybody that they don't like or that they don't think cares about them. So when it comes to managing and leading people, if you start there, most people won't start there. And then that becomes their biggest problem, and then they blame the people that they're leading because they're not doing what they're supposed to do. It's like, well, why would they? Why would they do anything for anybody that treats them like that? If once you get into that leadership position, if you go around to every person that you lead and you find out what makes them tick and you care unconditionally about them and about their success, you will be inspiring to them and they will run through that wall for you. Um, another people question about bringing people on to the company. So with all of the growth that you saw, as you were bringing people on, what was the number one characteristic um, that you looked for in an interview or one thing that you have people look for in interviews to make sure that they're aligned with the, the vision for the company? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, a book for you guys, uh, it's called The Ideal Team Player. It's by Patrick Lencioni. Um, he makes it super easy. So we adopted his philosophy back in 2020 um, when we were starting our academy. And with our academy, we were recruiting people to be a technician that had no prior experience whatsoever. So I was like, all right, well, we're just looking for character, right? So it made it kind of super easy. Um, so the three virtues that he talks about and that we recruit for in every position now is hungry, humble, and smart. That's what we're looking for. If you are hungry, humble, and smart, I'll teach you, how, well, I won't teach you how to work on a furnace, but we have qualified people that will teach people how to work on furnaces uh, or do whatever it is that you need to do. If you are hungry, humble, and smart, and if you look for that quality, and in the back of the book, he has interview questions, responses that you're supposed to get if they are, like, it's super simple, and it's an easy read, too. Um, but yeah, get the book, um, and then just basically copy what's in it. I mean, he lays it out. Uh, soup to nuts. Pretty simple. Uh, but those would be the three things that I would look for. Um, if you hire for character and train for skill, you'll be in a hell of a lot better spot than training the opposite way. Because get I've, I've tried it both ways, um, so I have experience. But yeah, I, I think you're spot on with, with that being a focus uh, of the quality of people and the character of people that you want to bring onto your team, for sure. Uh, how do you balance your mental and your physical well-being with how busy you are, and what kind of importance do you put on that? Uh, yeah, so I've got two little kids running around, uh, so that keeps my physical well-being moving. The biggest thing for me that keeps me balanced is, one, my amazing wife. The other thing is really taking time for yourself. So I start out each morning, and I write to my children. Now, my kids are one and four, so neither one of them can read, but one day I hope that they will be able to. Um, and I've been writing to them since, actually I started writing to my daughter about six months before she was born, um, and now I alternate days. So uh, my son gets Monday, Blake, my daughter gets Tuesday. Um, and for me, uh, it's just me putting my thoughts where, you know, lessons I want to give to them, just different things, and so that keeps me kind of grounded. Um, and then the first thing that I do when I get to the office um, is I write thank you notes to our team. So I have a goal this year of writing 2,000 thank you notes to our team. Um, and it seems simple, 
but everybody can probably point to a thank you note that you have hanging up in your office or that you put on the fridge because someone that you worked with reached out and said, hey, I really appreciate what you're doing. You're doing an awesome job. Keep going. And for me, that's my meditation because knowing and expressing um, that care and compassion around our company and watching others do the same, like, that's a really cool place to work. Like, I want to come into work because it's fun. Um, and so for me, that balance comes with making it fun and creating a culture where people truly care about one another um, and you can feel and see um, that care and compassion. So for me, those are two things that work really well. Um, just something I've been doing for, I guess it's now almost, shoot, it's almost five years um, that I've been doing that. So uh, I'm really excited to, uh, to give that to them uh, probably when they graduate high school or something like that. Uh, and uh, I can look back and see how silly I was or how, how great of a thought I, that was. We have time for one more question. So on this people theme, you've talked a lot about how important they are to the business. As a local business leader, can you talk a little bit about what you've done to enrich those, uh, the lives of those in your community, um, or maybe even more specifically, the lives of your employees? Yeah, so um, we talked about growing the company and creating opportunity. So uh, one stat that I am extremely proud about uh, is that in 2022, uh, we promoted 15% of our working population. To me, that is a sign that we are intent on developing our people and we're growing at a pace that they have those opportunities when they come. And so for me, that's a huge piece. I would say the other piece is our training center. So um, we have right, well, actually tomorrow evening, uh, we will graduate uh, a little over 60 students all 60 of which, before starting in our program, did not have a career in the trades. They didn't know a thing about whatever it is that they know now. And so for me, that is our biggest, um, that is our biggest initiative, is to keep educating the community and providing really great careers for really great people. Um, and so when we go into a new market or uh, expand, um, we're able to offer those opportunities into communities that don't have anything close to that um, and offer those resources uh, for people that want to find a great place to work and want a career that's sustainable. Um, that's the other thing that uh, I always tell our people is that, you know, People always like to be uh, cool in the summer, uh, warm in the winter. Uh, they enjoy indoor plumbing, and they like to turn on the lights. So I think there will be a need for us for quite a few years to come. So uh, that's, kind of, that's kind of how we look at it and, and how we affect and impact uh, the community that we serve. Okay, last question in the back. You obviously thrived under pressure and many businesses break in the growth, you know, because of the processes and the culture comes apart. I think you probably talked about that. Did you have, you must have had some moments where you thought, wow, this is getting away from us. How do we, you know, some, what are some of the pressures that you dealt with and how did you deal with them as you were growing so rapidly? Yeah, so there were definitely times uh, that I can remember vividly uh, where it was like, what? is going on here? What are we doing? But what I would tell you is that uh, the two people that I get to go to work with, well, dad, not so much anymore, but um, went to work with him for quite a few years before he retired, from dad just always believing in us. Um, you know, you talk about, or I talked earlier about a leader being inspiring. For me, he was that. He was inspiring. He started this thing with nothing. Here it is. Now I need to, with my brother, we need to take it somewhere else. And then I would tell you that the other piece is, you know, a lot of people, when you hear about family business and stuff like that, it's tough. You know, it, you got two people that don't get along or struggling. And uh, what I can tell you is that my brother and I have been very fortunate. 
um, to one, like to do different things, that helps, um, but uh, always trust in each other's decisions. And so for me, having dad's belief and then having my brother by my side have always been those things that I've always been able to lean on um, because they're both good at things that I'm not and I'm good at some things that they're not. And so together we make a good team. And I think that team really points to the bigger picture of, you know, when times are, are tough or you're running into problems, there's always a solution. It just takes sometimes stepping back, figuring out, again, are we solving for the right problem? Uh, do we have the right people to solve whatever the problem is? And we have been incredibly fortunate to find a lot of the right people at the right time. And so for me, that's that's what gets you through. And so I think that as you think about business and moving into, uh, you know, your careers or if you're already in a career is, you know, finding someone who complements your skills, not does the same exact thing and thinks the same exact way. Why do I say that? Well, because you can conquer much more with two rather than one. And if you do the same things, you're going to struggle to get out of each other's way and move the company forward. Everyone, please give it up for Chad. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed what you heard, I would greatly appreciate if you would rate the show or share it with someone who might enjoy it. As the name suggests, we are always looking to grow, so let me know in the comments what you thought and if there is anything you would like to hear on future episodes. Come back again soon, and always, keep growing out there.